Unit 2, Video Lecture 2, Types of Matter. The basis of all matter is atoms and molecules. They combine together to form matter. Now matter is broken up into two different types. Matter is either a substance or a mixture. If we were to take a look at something like gold and look down at a, into a microscopic view, we would see a whole bunch of atoms stuck together, all of them being gold atoms. However, looking at water or table salt, we can see that there's this red atom that signifies oxygen, and two white atoms representing hydrogen in the water. And when we look at the, micro the microscopic view of salt, we see the green chlorine atoms and the purple sodium atoms. Both gold and water and salt are types of substances. These substances are elements and compounds. An element, like we said, with gold is a substance that cannot be broken down. If we broke up this cube of gold, this gold atom would still be exactly the same as this gold atom. We say that it contains only one type of atom. Examples are gold, oxygen, nitrogen, the mercury that you would find in some older thermometers, the aluminum that you'd find in aluminum foil, the carbon that you may be writing with on your pencil, with your pencil. However, a compound is a substance that's made of two or more simpler substances. So when we looked at that water and we had the oxygen bonded to the two hydrogen atoms, we can break that down by breaking those two bonds. Now we have oxygen and hydrogen. If we were to take the sodium and the chlorine, we could break them apart and have the chlorine atom and the sodium atom. If we connect an electrolyzer filled with distilled water to a source of direct current, we can observe a slow evolution of gases. After some time, we notice that the volume of the gas released at the cathode is double that of the gas formed at the anode. To identify the gaseous products of the reaction, we collect each gas in a test tube and check its behavior in the presence of a glowing splint. Characteristic cracking sound proves that the gas released at the cathode is hydrogen. The ignition of the glowing splint is evidence that the gas collected from the anode is oxygen, which supports combustion. So if we consider the water that we just looked at, water is in fact a compound that's made of those two different elements. When we consider the elements that they're made of, hydrogen and oxygen, we know that they're both gases. 
However, when hydrogen and oxygen combine together, they form water, which is a liquid, leading us to understand that the properties of the compound are different than the properties of the elements. If you consider the video that we just watched, when we took hydrogen gas and exposed it to fire, we heard the pop. It exploded. When we exposed our oxygen, or when we, when we considered our oxygen, all we had to do is put a splint of fire, a spl uh, splint that was smoldering. It wasn't quite out, but it definitely wasn't on fire. And once it came, once it came back in, we saw it light back on fire. It's really important to understand that when these, when hydrogen and oxygen together, water behaves differently when it comes into contact with fire. If water behaved like its elements, then throwing water on a burning fire would cause an explosion and the fire to burn brighter and hotter. Our types of substances are elements and compounds. Let's consider mixtures now. A mixture is a combination of substances. Okay, each substance retains its chemical properties when we put them together. And we have two major types of mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures, something like milk, has a constant composition and you cannot tell the different parts that make it up. When you look at milk, you can't see what part of it is the water, what part of milk is fat, what mil part of milk is protein. They all blend together. However, in a heterogeneous mixture, it does not blend smoothly together. So we can see in this solution there's two distinct parts, the liquid part and the solid part. The pizza, we can see the crust, the pepperoni, and the cheese. And in the picture of the trail mix, we can identify all of the different types of nuts. Well, when we consider homo versus heterogeneous, the prefix homo refers to the same. So homogeneous mixtures look like it's the same thing. The prefix hetero means different, which is why we can tell the different parts of the heterogeneous mixture. So if we consider, if we consider our two t our, a penny and our mixture of water and dirt on the right, when we look down, that penny is still a mixture of two different metals. We see two distinct types of atoms. When we look at that dirt in the water, we see the water molecules still present, but then we also see the solid particles of dirt. And we can tell one substance from the second substance. So mixtures are homogeneous or heterogeneous. Now, when we can, when we can consider how to separate things, if we want to separate a compound into the element, into its elements, like we saw with the electrolysis of water, it, this must be done chemically. However, if we want to separate a heterogeneous mixture down into its parts, or if we want to separate a mixture down into its parts, we can separate based on its physical properties. Often it is necessary to separate mixtures. One of the major differences between mixtures and compounds is that mixtures can be separated physically, while compounds can only be separated 
by chemical reactions. For instance, polluted water needs to be filtered before it can be used again. Water treatment plants have a variety of filters and settling tanks used for removing various substances from the water. Here, polluted water trickles over a filter of rocks and pebbles containing living bacteria that eat many of the suspended particles in the polluted water. A variety of filters are used in automobiles to remove particulates from the oil, gas, and air that are essential to the operation of internal combustion engines. Some materials can be separated from the mixture by using a magnet. Magnet separation methods are used in solid waste recycling plants where iron cans are separated from aluminum cans and other non-metallic materials on their way through the recycling process. The dissolved and suspended impurities of water can be removed through the process of distillation. Water is distilled by evaporating it, usually by boiling. The heated water is allowed to cool and condense into another container. The dissolved and suspended impurities are left behind in this process, leaving pure water in the other container. Crude oil is also turned into a variety of fuels through the process of distillation. Different hydrocarbons in the crude oil have different boiling points. For example, jet fuel has a much lower boiling point than asphalt. The distillation process also removes any mineral or other impurities from the crude oil pumped from the earth. Mixtures are all around us. The air we breathe, the water we drink, a variety of products we use, and the trash we create are all examples of mixtures. By understanding mixtures and their physical properties, we have come to understand an important part of how the world works. <laughs>